Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another IBA video, this time for week 6 against Kohan. A couple of things before we get into this one, I feel like I say that every time. First of all, of course, be sure to check out Kohan down below, make sure to leave a like while you are down there. You might as well answer the question of the day while you are down there. What is your favorite Fairy Dragon Steel Core? We have a phenomenal Fairy Dragon Steel Core ourselves with Mega Mawile Hydreigon, and then Skarmory is a secondary steel to Mawile, really, really cool. And then Kohan has a very, very solid Fairy Dragon Steel Core in Zygarde 50, as well as Mega Scizor, and I believe Zygarde, or wait, did I say Zygarde? Zygarde, Florgis, and Mega Scizor. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's four in the morning right now. I know this video is late, and that's because my sleep schedule has been whack, and I've just been kind of all over the place, and I'm very, very sorry about that. I'm going to try to do a better job moving forward. I've been putting my PC together. I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing that, but the new PC is almost complete. I think tomorrow will be the day that it is fully put together, fully done, the day that I have my second monitor, and I'm ready to start recording on the last, um, or the, the new PC, which is awesome. I'm so looking forward to that. So I'm sorry if this commentary is not great, if I forget things, I'm definitely going to, and I'm so sorry. If that agitates you, just skip a, skip ahead a little bit, and I'm sorry, because I don't remember this battle too well, to be completely honest. But, we are going to go ahead and hop in here against Kohan's team. Like I said, he had a very scary Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and this is, if you remember, Saturday against Zane in the UPBA. This is our second time facing Mega Scizor, Flor or Mega Scizor uh, Manaphy Zyger, which is a very scary core, and you'll see that he actually did not bring Mega Scizor, which really threw me off guard. As far as team prep went, I was really scared of Salazzo, surprisingly. Our speed tiers are not the greatest when it comes to faster mods that hit above base 115, and, or above 110 maybe, and Salazzo is a Pokemon that obviously does that, and it's a very scary Pokemon for us to try to deal with. Uh, I was also obviously really scared of Zygarde and Manaphy, those two mods were very scary, and other than that, he brought basically what I expected. There was another mod that he didn't bring over, um, I expected Mega Scizor and he didn't bring that, and instead he brought Yuxi, I think, and there was another mod that I expected that he brought Florges and stuff. I don't remember what it was, but as far as our team went, like I said, super scared of Salazzo, so we are bringing A and B Hydreigon specifically for that Salazzo, actually, and I believe we can take two of any hits from a Life Orb Salazzo. Uh, I could be wrong about that. It might be uh, like we can take a plus two Z Sludge Wave or something. I don't know, but we are that, and we are rocking with Iron Tail for the Florges as well as Dark Pulse Draco, and I think U Turn, but let me double check. Dark Pulse, no, 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 it's Fire Blast because I felt like we had sw uh, well enough switch, good enough switch ins to everything to where U Turn wasn't a necessity. I never really saw us wanting to click U-turn. I really always saw us wanting to click an attacking move. So that's why I went with coverage over U-turn. Our next mod was going to be Miss Dusa the Mega Mawile. We are rocking a four attack variant this week because we are rocking another Trick Room team. Play Rough, Fire Punch, or Fire Fang, excuse me, Knock Off, and Thunder Punch. Our last move was up in the air for a while. It was, you know, Stealth Rocks. It was, um, what was it? It was, it was Stealth Rocks, Sucker Punch, Swords Dance, I think were the three that I ended up, um, or the plus Thunder Punch were the four that I ended up deciding on, but we don't quite Oko Manaphy without Thunder Punch, so I felt it was really, really nice to go Thunder Punch for that Manaphy. Obviously, no switches to play rough, knock off, or you know, the likes of Yuxi, things like that, because we don't want to get Thunder Waved, and we have Fire Fang. Fire Fang was for the Mega Scizor, which he obviously did not bring, so we kind of had a useless move slot there. Never were we clicking Fire Fang, and we had enough attack to actually live a Banded Zygarde Thousand Arrows, or plus one Zygarde Thousand Arrows after the Intimidate drop, because Zygarde sucks and has 100 base attack and I really don't like that Pokemon I think but um, I, I want to try it again though but that's our Mawile. Next up we do have Victini which is going to be a soft win con. We do have Blue Flare, Psy Shock, Thunderbolt and Sub. Psy Shock plus Blue Flare just destroyed his team minus Manaphy so we are rocking with Thunderbolt for that last move. I really want to go work up or something like Trick Room on this Victini instead but we went with Thunderbolt for the Manaphy. We do have Sub with uh, Leftovers. We have a very speedy Victini, enough speed to outspeed the Zygarde, and then we have a lot of bulk, and I think the bulk is to where a Zygarde Thousand Arrows, or a Zygarde Extreme Speed does not break our subs, and then we dump the rest into Special Attack, and it's going to be a soft win comp, we have to whittle things down, we have to whittle down the Manaphy, the Zygarde a little bit, and the Floor just in order to win with the Victini. But it's not like it's it's not exactly what we're going for. It's just if it happens, it happens. It's nice and it's there. We have Heliolus next. We have Heliolus with Magnet Rise, Hidden Power Ice, obviously for the Zygarde. Bolt Switch and Thunderbolt because he did not have great Thunderbolt resist besides the Zygarde, which we obviously outspeed HP Ice. And then Psych Up. And Psych Up is because we are Dry Skin for the Manaphy. And I'm hoping that we can get him to a plus three because we can live any plus three hit from the Manaphy that's not like 
Blizzard or something. Any base 90 move from the Manaphy at plus 3 after a spike. Click Psych Up and then blow that boy back to the next century after we Psych Up whatever stat changes he has, which is phenomenal. We can outspeed the max speed Manaphy and then we have the rest of Special Attack and then um, or we, we have enough Special Defense to live the plus 3 whatever hit from Manaphy after spikes and then the rest of Special Attack. And we are a Magnet. I don't know if I said that. We do have Skarmory. We have Skarmory with Whirlwind to phase. We have Roost, Bravebird, and Defog. Bravebird just does really, really nice in this game. I don't want Hazards on our side of the field. He does have Rockers in Uxi. And he did have Chestnut. That was the other mod I expected. He had Chestnut with Spikes, and I did not want to deal with that. We have Leftovers. We're just, it's very, very standard um, Skarmory. Four Defense Impish, I do believe. Yeah, four Defense Impish. 100 Special Defense. I think we can lift two of anything from Manaphy, probably. <laughs> and then we have a little bit of speed to speed creep of Florges. And I almost went Iron Head over Brave Bird, but I wasn't 100% that he was going to bring Florges, so it is what it is. And then lastly, we do have Sohan the Jellicent here. And Sohan is a really is basically the same set as last week, because I could not decide on the six Pokemon. We are Guav, Berry, Trick Room, Taunt, Ice Beam, Scald, Taunt for the Florges, the Zygarde, and the Manaphy. This is a soft Manaphy check. We have Ice Beam, Scald, and then we have enough Spadef to live a plus three Energy Ball after Spikes. I have a 50% chance to live that. And then that's what we're rocking with. So as far as the lead went, I really felt like it was best to lead Hyper Dragon. We match up well against five of the six Pokemon that he has. The only one that I don't want to see him lead is Florges, obviously, because that really forces us out. And if he let, leads Florges, then I could have just led Skarmory, and we would have been fine. But he does end up leading the Florges here, which sucks for us, because this was the one Pokemon I did not want to see. We do only 50% with Iron Tail if he is a generic, you know, 100 defense uh, plus defense nature on his Florges. So I could not risk that. Hyper Dragon was very, very important in this game. I didn't want to risk Scarf, Specs, whatever he may be uh, so I'm gonna go into Miss Dusa here because this basically guarantees us a KO at this at this point in the match it, like it sounds crazy to say that this is turn one but we go into this mod and he actually switches out properly expecting the Z Iron Tail and goes into Rotom and I was very scared of Rotom because this thing is will o -Wisp and Thunder Wave and I did not want to deal with that it also gets screened so I was expecting one of those four things to come out there as uh, four things you know reflect and light screen as he does end up going for will o -Wisp, so that's exactly what I expected we're back in a great position we're in on Hydreigon the worst thing he can do is HP Ice which he definitely has for my ground type which is going to be glide score so i am going to actually overplay here and go for iron tail this was a horrible play a horrible horrible play if i could go back in time i would just click dark pulse a hundred times over because i was burned and i forgot i was burned so i did 25 percent to floor just regardless so i should have just went for dark pulse because i have switches into the floor just nothing went wrong but instead i get crit on the hp ice i don't think that ends up mattering uh, I didn't actually notice that until now, but I get crit on the HP Ice, and now I have a weakened Hydra Dragon that's a very, very important Pokemon, and my switches into Salazzle are now just Jellicent, so I have to be very, very careful about Salazzle, as in comes the floor just, and he reads me very, very well on that play, he is going to go ahead and get that right, as I go for Dark Pulse this time, and I would have much rather had the Dark Pulse damage than the, the HP Ice damage on me, I would have much rather killed the Rotom, or at least it dented it severely, as uh, that Rotom is, is, is um, life form, by the way, which is very important, very important, there's so much damage, but now I'm pretty confident that I can go into Victini because I don't want him to overplay and be like, oh, well, he's going Mawile again, obviously, so I'm going to go Salazzle. So I didn't want him to do that, so I wanted to go Victini just in case, just to cover that, but he didn't. He just clicked Moonblast, so I really wish I went Mawile and just clicked a button there. And this is a sub Victini, like I said, and we can very freely sub up on this floor just to see what it wants to do. So I am going to go ahead and do that. We are going to go ahead and sub up on the floor just... And at this point, I don't know if it's Fizz Death or Spud Death based on the Dark Pulse damage. It was like impossible to tell. It was like the same rule. Regardless, it looked like I did like 7% and it was like it was like 6 to 8 or 8 to 10 if he was Fizz Death or Spud Death. It was like, it was really weird. So I'm going to go ahead and go for Side Shock here and find out if he's Fizz Death or Spud Death. And he is going to be very physically defensive. This is probably his answer to... I don't even know. I don't even know what this is his answer to. Lycanroc, maybe? I I have no idea what this would be his answer to. Lycanroc wouldn't make any sense, but he's going to go ahead and click Moonblast there, and obviously he doesn't do anything. I'm not liking the situation we're in to Moonblast break, breaks our sub. He has to click Moonblast here, otherwise he just takes another round of damage, or he could click Wish too. He could, could also click Wish. Those are his two options. So I am feeling very, very confident to go into Misdusa. Misdusa takes less than half from a Moonblast, which is still way too much for a Mawile, but I, again, force on the offensive pressure. He had no reason to switch out here, so I felt very safe getting Mawile in here, as he is going to go ahead and go for the Moonblast, and he does about half a little bit of, uh, maybe 40 he does maybe 40 to mawile but now mawile is in in front of something that you can actually click a button on and when that happens that's the scariest thing in the world 
is you have to give a Pokemon out. Goes Florges, and we are going to click play rough as in comes the Uxi. And Uxi is not an answer to Mawile, if you did not know. There are no answers to this monstrous Pokemon, as we are going to go ahead and get off our Mega there. So no more Intimidate for the rest of the game, which is important, because if he's banned as Zygarde, we dropped a 1,000 arrows now. Well, we drop regardless, because we took the damage, but that's not a switching. And... Uh, he's gonna go ahead and go for rocks here and play rough was a roll to kill it was a roll to kill we did like 49 percent but i am gonna go for knockoff here just because i do not want to miss because it is miss dusa obviously but he does have the cobra berry and we are just gonna barely miss out on that ko and i don't have sucker punch so unfortunately i'm forced to just go ahead and go for the knockoff again and just in case he switches out into something else i don't want to risk the um you know missing i don't want to risk something coming in and getting you know free setup or uh zygarde coming in and being banded or whatever i click knockoff just to cover everything and it does pick up the ko on yuxi and at this point he goes into zygarde and this is very very scary for us i was highly debating just staying in and clicking play rough on his potential sub or dragon dance but i knew way too little about this zygarde to do something like that so because he might expect sucker or something so i'm going to go ahead and switch out and go into high dragon i feel very safe going into this because this mon at this point doesn't really serve a purpose and he does go for sub so i really do wish that i could play rough there but it is what it is i kind of expected that but i was like it is what it is high dragon's a free sack i'm going to go and click dark pulse and so i go ahead and break his sub we guarantee outspeed this mon regardless i expected to die to e speed but if he was, he could be, like, I expect an E-Speed Tierra sub singular dance, like Dragon Dance or Coil. But he doesn't go for E-Speed, which really surprised me. Because I do break the sub, and he does go for Dragon Dance. So he really, really wanted that free Dragon Dance. Which really was, I was like, okay, did he not have E-Speed? Or did he just want a Dragon Dance in the face of my high Dragon? What's going on? So he is going to reveal to be left over. He did that last turn, but I forgot to mention it. And at this point, I am going to go ahead and click Draco. Because if he doesn't kill us, then we kill him. If he dragon dances again, if he subs, then we break sub, whatever. We could have missed, I guess, but it is what it is at that point. If we miss a 90% Draco on a sub plus one Zygarde, I guess we lose regardless. I guess that is what it is. So now, I am feeling pretty confident going into, I think, Jellison. I do believe Jellison. We do go into Sohan the Jellison. And at this point, I can click Trick Room, because we are a Trick Room Jellison to deal with this Zygarde. We have Ice Beam, and everything is fine. And he's going to go for sub, which actually really surprised me, because I'm not sure what he was trying to accomplish here, as I am going to go ahead and go for Trick Room, and maybe he was trying to phase a burn or trying to see if or trying to see if i was just going for a burn and i lost this mon regardless or i i'm not entirely sure because maybe skull didn't break his sub but i'm going to go for ice beam this turn because you know we have four turns of trick room left it's whatever i'm going to break this thing sub and then i'm going to kill it on the following turn if he allows me to kill this mon if he goes in the mana feed we have a dedicated switch into the uh heliolisk so i don't care even this mon like this mon can taunt the mana feed we're fine as he goes for thousand arrows and that's fine it puts us in range of the aguab berry i think that was a max roll by the way but regardless we, we're going to switch out in a second anyway so we could have just switched back in on rocks and we would have got a guaf regardless so it, I, I really don't think it mattered as he's going to get some leftover recovery there and i am going to go ahead and just go for ice beam again just the way he's been playing he's been just kind of attacking what's in front of him kind of just you know going for certain plays so I, i'm just going to go for ice beam just in case and he is going to send in john's dad and i don't know if kohan knows that i hate manaphy but he does send that in because kohan's kohan's a buddy of mine i don't know if he knows that i hate manaphy but i am going to go ahead and switch out here and go into Aki, the Heliolisk, like I said, we can live any plus three hit from this mon after spikes, rocks, whatever it may be. And he's going to go for a surf, so we're just going to get back up to full. So we're in a good position now. And I do believe Trick Room ends now. No, Trick Room does not end. We have one more turn of Trick Room. He's going to withdraw there. And I do believe I just go for a Thunderbolt. He did not have a Thunderbolt switch. And if he went into Zygarde, Trick Room ended. Then we KO'd with an HP Ice unless he was Yachi. So we were golden. So I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt. And it does not as much damage as I would like to this Forges. As I am going to just go for a Volt Switch this next turn. Twisted Dimensions return to normal. We outspeed. I'm just going to go for the Volt Switch with my girl Aki. As uh, I miss you, by the way, Aki. I haven't heard from you in a while. But we Volt Switch on that Forges. And we go out into Rustwing and Skarmory. This mod can't really do anything against us. There's a Fly. This mod can't really do anything against us. There's still a fly. <laughs> As it does go for the Toxic, probably expecting the Victini. We're not going Victini with rocks still up. I'm going to take this opportunity to get my rocks off of the field because, you know, Jellison got his Aguav Berry, so yeah, I don't have a reason to keep them up. And I don't want my Victini to get injured when it's a soft wind count of mine, so I am going to go ahead and get these rocks away. As I'm really wishing I had Iron Head here, but he's going to go for a wish here. A Synthesis, excuse me, a Synthesis. I knew he had a healing move, I just forgot which one. 
far. That tells me that he, that he can't wish past him something like Zygarde or Manaphy. So any chip is good chip this game. Any chip is non-recoverable chip this game. Assuming he's not Moonblast, Synth, uh, Wish Recover, or Wish Protect, excuse me. Then any chip is good chip. So he's going to get back up to basically full there. As I do believe I end up going for a Brave Bird to gauge damage. Because Brave Bird still does a lot of damage to floor. Just way more than it should. I think I had a lot of attack investment. Though I was like 56 attack investment or something. As we do like half to that floor just. Which is stupid. As he goes for Moonblast and... I'm not sure why. He's going to do basically 0 to this Skarmory as I get a free Roost off next turn, which is fine by me. Or I might have clicked Brave Bird one more time. I might have clicked Brave Bird one more time in case he went to Lazul on my, um, on my Roost. I don't quite remember. I might have just Roosted though to get back up to 100%. As he switches out, I expect it's to Lazul here as he goes into Raikiri, which is going to be his Rotom. And I do believe I just Brave Bird. No, I Roosted. I Roosted. Okay. I Roosted just so, you know, if Salazzo did come in, it couldn't Oko me and then I could KO it back with potential Brave Bird or, you know, do whatever, switch out. I I'm back at full. I'm back at full. That's what's important. So I'm going to switch out here. Rotom is a very big problem for my team. And I'm going to switch in Aki, which is very uncomfortable for me to do, but there's no longer rocks up, so it's fine. He's going to go for a Thunderbolt. He's Life Orb, like I said, and that hurts. That hurts a lot. That does way too much damage. But now we're in a position to where if Manaphy does get the plus three, we lost our check. But I was in such an uncomfortable position. I didn't really have another play. I could have went. I didn't have Hydreigon at this point in the match, so I didn't really have another option. He's going to go ahead and go for Thunderbolt again, so we do take two Thunderbolts, which is not good at all. And Heliolisk is looking it's looking good late game, but it's also looking way too weak to do anything. I'm going to click HP, just in case he wants to preserve this. It kills regardless. There's no universe where that Rotom that does that, that much damage to us kills us, or lives that HP ice. No universe. He goes into Salamandra here, which is the Heli or the Salazzle. And I have one play, and one play only. My voice cracked a little bit, I'm sorry. I go uh, Jellicent. Regardless, it doesn't matter. I go Jellicent no matter what. Because Jellicent can eat this up and click um, click Trick Room. I'm pretty sure it lived two Specs Sludge Waves, which is kind of nuts. And that did such little damage to me. I did not expect it to do that little damage. I expected it to be blown back by that and take like half and then have to risk a roll. But that did like 10% to me. Like it was, it was blew my mind when that happened. I was like Jellicent. You are OP, the OP Jellicent, so hot. So we are going to go ahead and go for Trick Room here. There's not really any downside to going Trick Room as he does sit in the floor. Just, I think I recover. No, I don't have recover. I think I switch out. I do. I, I was thinking a different match. I'm sorry. I go into Mawile here. That's a free switch into Mawile. I live Moonblast regardless. I should live Moonblast. It was looking pretty good for me to live Moonblast. I'll say that. I was willing to risk it as we live on 8. I'm pretty sure I live Moonblast no matter what. Gets a special attack drop. Doesn't matter. We click play rough, or we claim a KO. We might even claim two KOs at this point in the match if he doesn't have E-Speed on Zygarde. So I am going to go ahead and play rough here. And this this floor just is going to drop. It does not live that play rough. It is going to drop. And he said it was a max roll. I think it, it might have been. I, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we got a good roll. I, I'm not necessarily a max roll. But he's going to go ahead and send in Zygarde here. And I'm like, man, he's got E-Speed. He does have E-Speed. I got to switch out. My Mawa is looking so good in the late game because I still have Jellicent with Trick Room. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out into Jellicent because that's the only one that can take this on as he clicks sub. And if I would have just clicked play rough, we killed that Zygarde, and that was the whole game. I don't think there's a way in the world we lost the game once that mom went down. So Koan did very, very good bluffing that E speed. And I should have known that he didn't have it because he didn't click it earlier on Hydroig, and that's completely my own stupidity for not doing that. But I'm gonna click Taunt now, because Trick Room has one turn left, and if he dragon dances, that's game. He wins. Absolutely. So we click Taunt, prevent the Dragon Dance, and we get a free Trick Room this turn. Next turn we'll be able to break sub with Ice Beam and everything will be great. Clicks T, T arrows. I almost I might have been saying T waves this entire game. Clicks T arrows, we live. It's fine. We we EV to live that from 50% does not matter at all. We're gonna click Trick Room and we're gonna click Ice Beam the next turn. He's gonna kill Jellison, but that's okay. It does not matter too much because Jellison's kind of done its purpose. It's got Trick Room up for the last, you know, little stretch of the game for Mawile to kind of do its work. So I'm gonna go and go for Ice Beam, but he switches out, which was a very good play on his part, because he goes into Manaphy, knowing that I can't really do anything to this Manaphy. And I, he, I go for Ice Beam here. This was this was a really, really good play on Kohan's part. I really got to compliment him on this, um, because obviously he knew that I, I had to go for Ice Beam there. There's no other way. So I'm going to go for Taunt here to try to prevent the Tail Glow from happening that I know is so is so inevitable right there, as he does click Tail Glow. And I'm going to go ahead and just go for Skull, because I really want him to kill Jellicent. I really want him to kill Jellicent here, as... He goes for Z Rain Dance. I forgot Z went through Taunt. I and this is very scary because this was the last turn of Trick Room. So this Mon now outspeeds all of our Pokemon, and I think it Oko's all of our Pokemon as well. At least in the rain, it does Oko all of our Pokemon because it Oko's the teeny. Mawile is not at a good HP, and we don't have Sucker. Uh, I, I don't know if we have Skarmory at this point in the match. I can't tell. 
we might have Skarmory, but in, in Heliolus, because we do have Skarmory. Heliolus is at a stupid bad amount of HP, but I'm going to go ahead and go for Skull, because like I said, I want him to kill this Jellicent. I need him to kill this Jellicent, because Jellicent is, you know, not important anymore. Jellicent's done what it needs to do. I wish we had Trick Room still up, but we don't. We don't. It's okay, though. Jellison didn't have recovery. It's okay. The taunt wore off, too, and the Twisted Dimensions returned to normal. So we are going to go into Victini here, and the only thing in the world that I can do to win this game is to bait the Surf. There's no other play. I have to bait the Surf, go into Heliolisk, and then click Psych Up as I'm recovered. There's literally nothing else I can do to win this game, and that's the only thing I could have done. Maybe, like, I don't know, risk the Speed Tide with Scarf? I don't know. Scarf Thunder? I don't know. I didn't have another play in the world, and we do bait out the Surf. Koan said he made that play because he thought it was too obvious to go into Heliolisk. I made the play I did because I felt like I lost no matter what I did if I clicked any other button. If I clicked any other button, I'm pretty sure I lost the game. Since he's only plus one speed and not plus three, a, t a special attack, he doesn't go Heliolisk, and we psych up. And we psych up that boy's um, plus one speed. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I'm talking way too much, but we, we psych up his plus one speed, and that is important. Because now we have speed Salazzle, so now Salazzle does not come in for free, and we get free damage on Salazzle with a Volt Switch, and we're able to preserve Heliolisk, which is very important, because Heliolisk at this point in the match has a great chance to Oko the Zygar with HP Ice. He is going to go ahead and go into Salamandra here, the Salazzle, and like I said, this is why we have the, the Psych up here. We go for the Volt Switch and go ahead and get on out of there. No point in not, as we do way too much damage to that Salazzle, and I'm not really sure what to do at this point in the match. I'm going to go for Mawile to try to sack it off. And because I think that Victini can come in on this mod and kill it, and then I'm very, very scared of Zygarde, but I think that we can kind of, I, I think we can maybe deal with it. I think we can maybe deal with it. But he's gonna go for a sub, and I don't have Sucker, so I am just gonna go ahead and go for the knockoff here and try to kill this Salazzle sub. I tried to just kill the Salazzle, hoping that he just had Willow, but he did end up going for the sub, and now he goes for Fire Blast and misses. And Mawile lives to see another day as Mawile kills the Salazzle, which was not expected at all. I did not want that to happen at all i really I, at this point i was like <clears throat> we might if we miss if he goes into zygarde and we miss a play rough we lose the game now so this was not an ideal position for us to be in honestly so we got to be very careful here i'm just gonna click play rough but it was for glare as if he gets the para and he get, clicks dragon dance and i get paired two turns in a row he wins the game and that I'm, I'm, it makes sense why he did that but i'm gonna go for play rough here and we're gonna connect and we're gonna win and i'm sorry about that miss kohan it definitely mattered. I'm not sure if you 100% won regardless. I think it would have been really interesting to see how it played out because Heliolisk did have a chance to kill the Zygarde. But if I, if you killed the Ma while I had to go into Victini, I killed the Salazzo and then I didn't kill the Zygarde. If you just click Dragon Dance, you probably just won the game. So that miss definitely sucks. But we are going to keep our streak going here. 3-3 three and three now, which is awesome. And we face my good buddy Kurt the Buzzful next week. Be sure to check out Kohan down below. He's a great guy and a good friend of mine. And with all that being said, Thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.